hi guys welcome back to my channel and thank you so much for clicking in this video we're going to handle the second networking project on our list so in the previous video guys we managed to handle the first networking project in our list okay and we said we'll be beginning from the very basic project to a much complicated one so guys suppose you have not watched the previous video i will leave a link on the description part click on the link and watch the previous and watch the previous video because it's very very important for this one we start from the very basic one to a much complicated one right and we also need your sub and we also need your support guys suppose you're not subscribed do us that favor hit on the subscribe button so that you cannot miss the important videos that we will be uploading on daily basis based on networking project and other domains okay so welcome and let's start okay so i have a problem here let me just show you the problem this is the problem that i have got the problem says xyz company is a fast growing company in eastern australia with more than 2 million customers globally the company deals with selling and buying of food items which are which which are basically operated from the headquarters okay the company is intending to open a branch near the local village bonalbo thus the company requires a young it graduate to design the network for the for the branch i mean the network is intended to operate separately from the hq network very important guys the network is important the network is intended to operate separately from the hq network okay now being a small network the company has the following requirement during implementation during design and implementation okay the company only requires one router and one switch for that small network okay all these products should be cisco products okay then the company requires that branch to have three departments which are admin stroke it finance stroke hr and finally customer service stroke reception and then part c each department is required to be in a different villa okay but the each department is required to have wireless network for the users okay all devices in the network are required to obtain ipv4 address automatically but f devices in all the net in all the departments are required to communicate with each other okay now assume the isp gave a base network of this one you as a network engineer who has been hired design and implement a network considering the above requirements okay guys so this is the case study before you can do something you have to understand the background of the problem and you want to evaluate the problem and to identify the possible solution to solve that particular problem okay there's a company that is based in eastern australia and you know it uh, operates and it deals with selling and buying of food items and all these operations are done from the headquarter and i can assume that the company has no branch so far and now the company is intending to open a branch near the local village okay because you know two million customers from the headquarters are too much so they are trying to open a branch to accommodate other customers so that the headquarter so that the headquarters cannot be flooded okay so the company requires just a young IT graduate to design the network for the branch okay and the network is intended to operate separately from the HQ this is a very important point guys the network is the network is intended to operate separately from the HQ network basically what this means is that the branch network will be in a different autonomous system from the HQ network okay very important during our design and, uh, and implementation I mean okay then there are some requirements that the company requires one router and one switch to be used all Cisco products because you know it's a small network very small okay then three departments 
which includes this one okay each department is required to be in different VLANs very important meaning in our configuration meaning in our design and implementation will have different VLANs three VLANs okay because three departments different VLANs three departments three VLANs okay each department is required to have wireless network for the users meaning at every department we will have access point wireless access point to provide wi-fi for the users then finally part five host devices in the network are required to obtain ip address automatically basically to obtain ip address automatically we are gonna use dhcp server and we are gonna configure the router here as our DHCP server okay now part F which is the final point devices in all the departments are required to communicate with each other you know these devices are in different VLANs we have three departments okay which represent three VLANs so by default devices in different VLANs will not communicate and hence we have to implement what is called inter VLAN routing and to enable these devices in different VLANs to communicate, okay? So I will list those important points down so that we can take the approach from there. And now finally, assume the ISP gave out a basin talk of this one. You as a young network engineer who has been hired, design and implement a network considering the above requirements. This is the base network, okay? And considering the requirements, the branch is required to have three departments. Meaning now, we have to do some subnetting to allocate IP address to each subnet, okay? So basically what I'll start with, guys, is the design part. Before we can go to subnetting and configuration part, okay? The company said they require just one router, okay? I'll choose 29, 11 router, and place there. Okay, then one switch, a Cisco switch, I'll take one switch and place here. How many departments? We have three departments. So, let's say, so this is the first department, PC and the printer. The second department is a PC and the printer also. And finally, the third department is PC and the printer also, you know. There are several there are several devices, so we can put them all here. Okay? This is just a demonstration. A kind of a prototype. Okay? So, let's go back to the case study. Each department is required to be in different VLANs. This is the con configuration part. We will just comment to indicate which VLAN is this. Each department is required to have wireless network for the users, meaning we have to configure access points. So basically, I'll come to wireless devices and choose access point for this uh, department, access point for this department, and finally access point for this department. And now, let's go back. Post devices in the network are required to obtain, that is the configuration part, devices configuration part, and now let's do the connection. Let's do the cabling. I'll use the automatic cable type. And then from printer, the, I mean from P switch to access point. Then from this to this. This is a very important project, guys. Remember, we are going to handle VLANs, inter VLAN routing, DCP server, and subnetting, which are very, very important. And those are things that we have learned in our previous classes these are very very important projects the complexity of these projects will increase you know as we handle many projects so consider this one is a simple project the next one will be a much little bit uh, complicated than this one and then very very important very very important okay so we are done doing the design part as you can see we have a router as required a switch 
and the host devices. And these host devices, department one, two, three. And basically I just spread the boundaries so that we can know which department is this. So that is, uh, let's say, there, and uh, let's, let's use green. Another one here. And finally, the last department, at least uh, blue. Okay. What I'll do next is just to comment. The first department was uh, admin stroke as IT. So this is admin stroke IT. Admin stroke IT. Then uh, we have finance stroke HR. We have customer service CS stroke reception. Okay. And then what else can we comment? Let me just go to back to the case study. One router, three departments, dep oh, villains. So let's assume I admin this department belongs to villain 10. So let's say villain 10. This belongs to villain 20. And finally here belongs to villain 30. Okay. So we are good to go and start the practical part of this one subnetting and configuration okay so the next step guys is to go for subnetting okay and for subnetting guys i will open word document and guide you through it so i'll open word we will do subnetting based on the requirements Okay, so basically what you have to list during subnetting, the base network, the base network, which is 192.168.1.0, okay, then the number of departments required or the number of subnets required, number of subnets is equal to 3 okay so these two will act as the guideline for subnetting okay guys in the previous project that we handled it is very similar to this one because in that particular project we were also given a base network and the number of required subnets okay in that case there were two and now here there are three and we said to find the number of subnet guys there is a formula okay okay and that formula is number of subnet is equal to 2 raised to power n okay where this n will represent the number of borrowed bits the number of borrowed network bits okay so so 2 raised to n is equal to 3 number of subnets 3 so this is the formula and n here represents the number of borrowed bits the number of borrowed network bits so which value here that 2 raised to that value will give us 3 so let's try 2 raised to 0 will give us 1. That's wrong. Okay. 2 raised to 1 will give us 2. That is very less. You know, when you are doing calculation, the number n should give a, a result of that is equivalent to the number of subnets or more than the number of subnets. Okay. But it should not give a value that is less than. Okay. The number of subnets. The number of required subnets okay so two, let's try 2 raised to power 2 that will give us 4 the number of departments and you say the number of department the number of subnets you know the formula here should give a value which is equivalent 
to the required value here or more than okay zero is less one is less two is more than okay meaning n must just be two okay so n is equal to two and we said guys n represent the number of borrowed bits the number of net borrowed network bits let's go back to our base network this is a class c address okay and for a class c address the subnet mask let's just say class c subnet mask should be 255 255.255.0 okay and when you convert this to binary guys when you convert this decimal value to, to binary i mean you will get a value that is equivalent to sorry the first oct octet will be eight ones one two three four five six seven eight okay because two five five all the bits are turned on okay and now the second octet also will be eight bits turned on the same for third octet eight bits bits turned on okay and now for the last octet guys you see it's zero no bits is turned on so it's all zero zero one two three four five six seven eight okay so normally this is the subnet mask of a class c address plus the binary form of it but we have two borrowed bits to satisfy the requirement here guys what do we do this is the normal subnet mask of a class c address but now to satisfy the subnet requirement we have to borrow two network bits so the new binary form will be remember this is the first binary form okay now the new binary form will be and I'll, I'll copy it after borrowing after borrowing after, after bo after borrowing two bits okay now new binary form is equal to this one then we borrow two bits two network bits the network bits are represented by one 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 okay now we have borrowed two bits okay from the host portion okay now the network id will be represented from this point from the last one to the first one here okay from here to here sorry to here okay now this will be the network bit and this will be the old portion so guys to carry on with subnetting let's convert this back to decimal to convert this back to the decimal guys an octet that has its all bits turn on represent a binary represent a decimal value of 255 then 255 then 255 for these three okay now let's go for the last octet okay and convert this to decimal we want to convert we want to convert this value in decimal and now we start put this into we convert the binary into decimal to find the last octet of the new subnet mask this is the new subnet mask let me just say new sm okay 2 raised to 0 times 0 is 0 2 raised to 1 times 0 is 0 2 raised to 2 times 0 is 0 2 raised to 3 times 0 is 0 2 raised to 4 times 0 is 0 2 raised to 5 times 0 is 0 2 raised to 6 times 1 is 64 plus 2 raised to 7 times 1 is 128 so it's 128 plus 64 
and we get 182 conversion of binary into decimal guys pretty much simple if you have any problem kindly research about it google and you will understand it better okay so this is our new subnet mask and basically we're going to use this subnet mask guys plus this space network now to find the num to <coughs> to allocate ip address at every department okay all right so we said in our previous class guys the class of subnetting whenever a subnet mask ends with 92 192 i mean now the block size is let me show you subnet mask block size calculation this is it when subnet mask ends with 128 the block size was 128 when subnet mask ends with 128 the block size is 128 192 becomes 64 224 becomes 32 and so and so forth and now our subnet mask ends with 192 now our block size is 164 and now the block size will tell us how to move from one subnet to another okay all right so let's go 192 represent a block size of 64 block size is equal to 64 okay now let's find the ip location for each depart now <coughs> now let's find ip location for each department okay first department first subnet okay second subnet and find a third subnet because we have three departments okay so the first department guys we always say network id network id broadcast id id okay and uh, host range okay then finally sub no now we use this so for the network ID guys you know this is our block size and the network ID guys will be this one okay dot zero should ensure that the first network ID begins from dot zero okay and now the second network ID should begin from the block size plus this one okay which is let me just copy this first and paste here now in the second subnet the network ID will be this one plus the block size which is 64 okay can you hear me can you can you understand that and now finally on the third department let me just paste this the network id will be the block size which is 64 okay plus the network id of the previous subnet which is 128 and now from this point we can calculate the broadcast id and the range of valid host ids okay to find the the broadcast id guys the broadcast id will be the last ip address to move to the next subnet if this is the next subnet now the last ip address we is 192.168.1.63 the last ip address to move to the next subnet okay and now broadcast id here will be the last ip to move to the next subnet which is which is 192.168.1.127 okay all right and now here guys you know we don't <coughs> to find the broadcast id here guys if you have not calculated the fourth subnet 
just add 164 here and subtract 1 okay so let's just add 63 here which will be 191 192.168.1.191 .191. that will be the broadcast ID of the third subnet okay and now let's find the range of valid host the range of valid host guys lies between the network id and broadcast id so the network id is 192.168.1.0 but now the range of valid host lies in between meaning it's dot one two one and two dot one sixty eight dot one dot sixty two in between these two okay zero to sixty three so the range of valid from dot one to dot sixty two okay the same for for the second submit I'll copy paste I'll paste here and say 65 now 65 subtract 1 here 126 126 and finally the third subnet will paste and say here is 129 you had one here subtract one here 129 and now subtract one here which is the 190 okay now guys we are done okay we can now go back to the configuration part we are done with subnetting all right this is the first subnet and the first subnet the network id is 192.168.1.0 slash so slash the so this is the subnet mask and when you convert it to and when you convert it into a slash notation, you'll find the value which is so this is the binary. This is 8888 8, 8 plus 2. 8, 16, 24, plus this 2, which is uh, 26. Okay. A separate mask of this one represents a slash notation of 26. Okay. So I'll go back to get tracer and finish commenting slash 26. Then I go back here again and say now the network is 192.168.1.64 slash 26. And finally here 192.168.1.128 slash 26. Okay? The subnets. Network at every subnet. Okay? We are following here. The first subnet, the network ID was yeah as you can see second one dot 64 third one dot 60 dot 128 i mean and the subnet mask for all is this one which is represented by a slash 26 notation so i'll go back to the configuration part so guys we are done with subnetting with the comments and let's go back to the problem the first case is done second one is done each department is required to be in different VLANs. Now the configuration part begins. Let's configure VLANs. How do we configure VLAN? And where do we configure VLAN? We configure VLANs in the switches. Okay? So I'll click on the switch. Then you come to command li. Enable. It's config t. Okay? Then so I will get the interfaces which is uh, gig 04, this is gig 02 and finally gig 03. Okay? So I'll go to the same switch and say interface gig interface range because we want to configure the same parameter to those particular interfaces. Interface FA0 slash 2 to 4. I'm very sorry, it was a FA0 slash, not a gig. Okay? Gig are for the routers. So interface range this one and you hit enter and now switch port mode access how to configure VLANs you enter that interface then you change that interface into access mode then after changing it into access mode now you assign the VLAN number now switch port access VLAN 10 as you can see access vlan doesn't exist creating vlan 10 and we are done 
sending VLAN to these interfaces. So let's go to the second interfaces which are a phase of 5, 6 and 7 and ascend to VLAN 20. So I'll just try to retrieve the above configuration. Okay. A phase of uh, 5 to 7. Okay. Switch port mode access. Then switch port access VLAN 20. Very simple. Then finally, which interfaces are these? This this one is a uh, 10, 9, and 8. So it's 8 to 10. 8 to 10. Switch port mode access. Then switch port access VLAN 30. Do right. Exit. Do show start. As you can see, guys, we have assigned these interfaces to VLAN numbers. As you can see, slash 2 and slash 3 VLAN 10. I mean, I mean, slash 2 to 4 VLAN 10, 5 to 7 VLAN 20, I mean, and finally, 8 to 10 VLAN 30. Okay? So we are done configuring VLANs. Let's go back to the problem. Each department is required to have wireless for the users. Okay? As you can see, guys, we have placed the wireless access points at every department. And now let's configure them. We configure password and SSID, the Wi Fi name. Okay? Start from that one and you come to config and uh, port uh, one okay port one le let's say the name is uh, that is uh, admin admin wi-fi and the password should be the authentication mechanism should be wpa2 psk okay uh, let's say admin at one two three okay it's done let's configure the third uh, the second access point i mean you come to port one and say let's say this one is uh, finance finance wi-fi and password sh should be let's say f finance at one two three and finally the third access point come to config port one the name should be cs Wi-Fi and the password should be CS at one two three. We are done, guys. We are d sorry, 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 sorry. The password should be a minimum of eight words. Okay. So I'll go back and reconfigure it again. I'll configure the password again and say. See a customer at one, two, three. Okay, we are done. So let's go back to the problem again and say all devices in the network are required to obtain IPv4 address automatically. Devices in all the departments are required to communicate with each other. Guys, to obtain IPv4 address automatically, that is DCP server implementation. For the devices in different VLANs to communicate, that is inter-VLAN routing. So let's go to the router and configure the two. Okay. So I'll go back to the configuration part. And guys, before we can proceed, I want to explain something. You know, these ports here that are connected to the host devices at every department, they are access ports. And we said access port can only access one VLAN at a time okay so you know during communication in the network the traffic will be going to the router then coming back for example from PC0 the traffic will be going from PC0 through the switch to the router then coming from the router to switch to the destination and now the traffic that will be passing this interface will have various VLAN ID. For example, the traffic from this 
department will be having will have a villain idea of villain 10 from here villain 20 and from here villain 30 hence this interface should be a trunk interface because a trunk interface allows passage of multiple villains so this is a phase 0 slash 1 So interface FA zero slash one switchport mode trunk okay and we hit enter and to write now we are done with everything on the switch so any configuration that's so any configuration that is remaining is in the router and we will go on the router and start the and start configuring what is required okay so i'll click on the router cli say no the first configuration that we'll do is to turn this interface up it's in the shutdown by default so enable config t interface gig i hope it's gig zero zero gig zero zero yeah so it's gig zero zero no shutdown and do right okay we are done so what's remaining basically is to configure intervillain and dhcp server we'll start with the intervillain routing okay and to configure intervillain routing guys we said from a single physical interface we create multiple sub interfaces for example this is gig 00 so from this interface we will we will create sub interfaces and assign ip address that will act as a default gateway to the respective vlan okay the first thing is to create a sub interface okay let's go on exit how do you create a sub interface kindly take note on which interface is connected to your network okay gig zero zero so interface gig zero slash zero then to create a sub interface this is vlan 10 and to create a sub interface for vlan 10 let's say gig zero zero dot 10 okay a sub interface from this physical interface okay and it enter then after creating a sub interface guys the most important part is to specify encapsulation dot one q okay dot one q then the vlan number encapsulation dot one q and the vlan number for vlan 10 the first command was to create a sub interface that is similar to the vlan number dot 10 here is vlan 10 okay then encapsulation dot one q the villain number which is villain 10 okay then we want we want to assign this sub and interface as the default gateway for this villain and now we are sending ip address to this interface that ip address will act as the default gateway for this villain okay for this subnet and we said for first and we said for the first subnet the range of valid host id start from dot one so let's say the router takes dot one okay the router's interface that interface one and two dot one six eight dot one dot one and now subnet mask guys we said two five five dot two five five dot two five five dot, 255 dot 192. don't forget this was our subnet mask for all the subnets okay and you hit enter so let's go to the second interface which is so interface the same physical interface so you hit sub interface interface gig zero zero dot the second vlan which is which id vlan 20 dot vlan 20 and you hit enter then encapsulation 
dot 1q20 the VLAN number guys don't forget and you hit enter and now you assign a PRS to this interface let me try to retrieve the above configuration and to assign a P address to this interface guys we said in the first in the second subnet the range of valid host starts from 65 okay so the let the router's interface the, the created sub interface to take 65 okay and it enter do you right exit and now finally we create a sub interface for this VLAN which is VLAN 30 dot 30 then encapsulation dot 1 Q 30 the VLAN ID okay and IP address should be for the third subnet the IP address the range of valid IP address for host the range of host valid IP address should start from 129 okay okay so the router's interface the sub interface will take dot 129 and it enter do right exit we are done configuring interval and routing and as you can check do show start sorry As you can see guys, we have created how many sub-interfaces? Three sub-interfaces from this physical interface. Dot 10, dot 20 and dot 30. For dot 10 guys, represent the first subnet with the, uh, you know, villain, villain ID is indicated here plus the IP address of the default gateway. Okay? Alright. So what's remaining guys is to configure DHCP server. Guys, to configure the CP server, we said the first thing is to enable the CP service on that particular device. Okay, but you know, on the Cisco devices, by default, it's enabled. So I'll go back to the router, exit, and say service the HCP. This command here will the will enable DHCP service. Okay. Then after you have enabled DHCP service on that particular route, router, I mean, after you have enabled DHCP service on that particular device, now you create pools. Okay. For example, this is admin, this is finance, and finally, customer care stroke reception. Okay. For example, so this will be pool admin. Just create a pool which using which command IP DHCP pool. Okay, admin. Say admin pool. Okay, hit enter. And now, after you have created this pool, guys, it it represent this subnet. Okay. Now let's assign a network address to the pool that we have created the network should be just say network 192.168.1.0 now the network you don't place ip address here okay plus the subnet mask which is a slash 26 notation 255 255.255.252 slash 26 notation and you hit enter after that you give a default gateway default gateway the default gateway guys will be the ip address of that sub interface that we created and assigned to that particular VLAN, which is dot 10 this the ip address of this sub interface dot 10 it was 1.1 .1, okay very simple 12.168.1.1 and now DNS server let's give it uh, the same as IP 12.168.1.1 it enter and now domain name domain name let's say uh, admin.com 
and exit we are done okay and now this devices here will be assigned IP address automatically let's move to the second subnet okay in which we will create another pool so in the second subnet we'll create a pool called IP DCP pool pool let's say finance pool okay assign network to this pool the network should be this one 1.2.168.1.64 okay slash 26 notation so the network should be 192.168.1.64 a subnet mask of 255.255.255.192 and you hit enter default gateway now you assign the default gateway default router the same thing for the default router it will be the ip address of the sub interface we created okay while implementing intervillain which was dot 20 the ip address of this interface was dot 65 okay so it's uh, 12.168.1.65 and now dns server will also 12.168.1.65 and domain name will be let's say finance dot com and exit we are done for this subnet and now these host devices will be allocated IP address automatically so let's go back to the final subnet so let's go back to the last subnet which is a uh, VLAN 30 CSS and CS and reception of which will create another pool which is called IP DHCP pool let's say uh, CSS dot com okay. sorry no problem let's just go on now network we we'll send network to that pool which is this one okay one and two one and two dot one six eight dot one dot one two eight okay subnet mask of two five five dot two five five dot two five five dot one nine two okay and it enter now default router will be the IP address of that sub interface we created while implementing interval and routing which is dot three dot start I mean the IP address was dot one two nine one and two dot one sixty eight dot one dot one two nine DNS one and two dot one sixty eight dot one dot one two nine domain name css dot com exit do right guys we are done configuring everything as per the requirement okay so basically what is remaining is to test communication devices in all departments are required to communicate with each other that's to test communication the first thing that I will do is to change the allocation IP allocation method to DHCP. I'll click on the PC, come to desktop, IP, and you come to DHCP. Give it time. I hope it will pick up. As you can see, as you can see, successful. Now for the printer, config. Then you come to you come to fast Ethernet zero. IP to DHCP it will pick up. As you can see, dot three. And uh, for the access point, let's just give. For the access point, guys, we'll play some host devices at every department. So I will finish with this department first. Now let's go back to the second subnet and do the same. And it will pick. Let's just give it time. Click on the printer. Come to the first than zero. DCP give it time let me hover over it it has taken dot six six okay now for the last subnet 
config sorry parasitan is zero as you can see it has it has picked automatically now for the pc it has a config i mean dsp it has picked automatically okay and printer okay all right guys so guys we said so guys in the problem each department is required to have wireless access network each department is required to have wireless network for the users so we have access point here access point here access point here so let's test them i will place things like uh, let's say a smartphone here and a laptop here a laptop here and a smartphone here a smartphone here and uh, a laptop here and try to connect them to the access point so for example this one the access point name was uh, it was uh, admin Wi-Fi and the password was admin at one two three so I'll go to smartphone and try to connect to it come to config well it's zero and now it's under SSD paste that word admin Wi-Fi and authentication should be admin at one two three and close this one I hope it will connect just give it time and we will check the IP address that it has been assigned so let's go to the IP address and check the IP address that it, that it has been assigned go to desktop and check the DCP I believe go back come back to static and again to DCP as you can see it has been assigned IP address in that network okay so finally so also in this department now let's connect this laptop and to connect laptop guys we have to insert a wireless module so the first thing is to turn off the laptop and remove the existing module as you can see now the port is empty and drag this WPC 300M okay press there turn it on again now let's go back to the laptop and check the password of and let's check the password and the SSD name of this Wi-Fi finance Wi-Fi finance at one two three for for laptop you come to desktop wireless PC you come to PC wireless and now you come to connect and refresh just give it time we have three access points CSS Wi-Fi admin Wi-Fi and finance Wi-Fi and now we want to connect with finance Wi-Fi connect the password is uh, finance at one two three and you connect close this and close this one as you can see it has connected successfully okay it has connected successfully so finally let's go back to this department also and now I'll involve tablet and connect the tablet on this side this so I'll click on the tablet come back to come to wireless zero and uh, which Wi-Fi was this CSS Wi-Fi CS Wi-Fi customer at 123 so the name is uh, CS Wi-Fi the password is customer at 123 and close we want to see IP address that it has been given for PC let's go back to as you can see the it has been allocated IP address dynamically okay everything is working perfectly fine guys and now what's remaining basically is to test communication I will test communication from this smartphone to this PC and from this tablet to this printer and finally from this laptop mm, to this printer again okay or from this laptop to this smartphone so let's start from this smartphone to this PC the PC as dot 131 okay so I'll try to ping dot 131 ping 192.168 
1.131. Give it time. Intervillian routing has been implemented successfully. The CP server is working. Just give it time. As you can see, guys, everything is working perfectly fine. Okay. Now let's test from this tablet to this printer. The printer has a dot one three. Okay. So I'll go back to our desktop and try to pin. 1.2.168.1.3 Everything is working perfectly fine. The first bracket might always fail, but the subsequent one successful. As you can see, everything is working perfectly fine, guys. The our implementation is working. And now from this PC to this, uh, let's test which one. Let's test this PC, which is a uh, dot uh, two. From the laptop to PC, I mean. Come to command from ping one and two dot one sixty eight dot one dot two and you hit enter. Let's give it time, guys. It will ping successfully, guys. Pretty much simple. This was a very, very important project that we are subnetting with that we unlock the decent part subnetting VLANs, DCP server, and inter VLAN and access point configuration pretty much simple guys so basically that will mark the end of this project and as you can see everything has been implemented successfully and they are working as required and now the company has indeed hired a young IT graduate to design a network for their branch and the network for the branch is perfectly working as required guys basically that's the end of this video suppose you like this video don't log out without subscribing support our channel guys we're doing this one for you we love you so much and we want to give you the best hit on the subscribe button like our video and drop a comment below and drop a comment below bye and see you again